Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. Without any further ado, let's get right into it, y'all. Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your, your grace, Lord God, your grace that's brand new every morning, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for uh, showing me what a thing was that I had just set down and misplaced, Lord God. Thank you, God, for showing us the, the, the right path, Lord God, when we, when we are looking in the wrong direction. Thank you, God, for showing us the right things when we have set our eyes or our hearts or our minds on that which you don't like, Lord God, that which you don't approve or we don't condone, Lord God. Thank you, God, for showing us, Lord, that, that your way is the only way. That there's no other way besides you that we may uh, attain sonship. That we may attain everlasting life. And I thank you, God, for revealing it to me and revealing it to us, your people, Lord. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Have your way this morning, God. Remove all barriers and hindrances and roadblocks for bring us from hearing you clearly seeing you clearly and from understanding you, Lord, and help us, God, to obey you, to do your will, whatever that may be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right. Today's scripture is coming from John chapter 16, <clears throat> verses 25 through 33. These things I have spoken to you in figurative language, but the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I did not say that I shall pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. 
Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said to him, See, now you are speaking plainly and using no figure to no figure of speech. Now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you. By this, we believe that you came forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, and has now come, that you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. <clears throat> Jesus came from the Father and he went back to the Father. Came from, went back to. All of us who are in Christ are born of the Father, and we will one day return to the Father as well. Um, if we're in Christ, God is our Father. The Father, we call him the Father, call him God. You know, it. it I think we shouldn't get too uh, entwined in in in, uh, in titles and in and, and descriptions. You know what I'm saying? Um, God is God, no matter how you look at him. Um, God is spirit. Uh, <clears throat> and then it got the word of God, John 4, 24 says, God is spirit. I'm not sure, um, in the script, I think uh, Corinthians, uh, Paul says, the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And um, the uh, John chapter 1 says, uh, the word was God, the word is God, and the word came and dwelt in the flesh and walked among us. You know, and all of these are one God, one thing. And so I think that um uh, and now I just think about something. Um uh, I was I was given a lesson. I'm off script. Years ago, one of the brothers said, um, oh, I was talking about how how God speaks to us. And I was telling the ways, I I, I, I I thought there were three ways, but I think, now that I think there's four ways that God speaks to us. <clears throat> um, and, I, and I say he might speak through circumstances, situations. He might speak through the word, or he might speak through, speak audibly through something you can hear. You, oh, and yeah, and a still small voice. There are, there are four. So he may speak audibly through something you can hear. It might be through your own mouth or through the mouth of someone else. Maybe through the still small voice, maybe through situations and circumstances that God speaks to you, and he, he may speak through the word of through the word through the written word, and uh, but all but he's always speaking though. And one of the brothers said, well, "What about the Holy Spirit?" I, I was, but I'm trying to tell him God is the Holy Spirit. There's not that's not a way that God talks to you through the Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit speaks to you. There still has to be a way that that you receive the communication. The Holy Spirit is always speaking. He may speak through the word, through a still small voice, through a situation or circumstance. He may speak through something that you can audibly hear with your with your physical ears. And I'm saying that, um, I, and I, I go to say that because uh, <clears throat> there's confusion about who God is and who Jesus is. Sometimes, you know, what I'm saying there's division about it and there's confusion about it. But guess what? They're all the same. And there is no three teams. There's no two different teams. <clears throat> and if we are in Christ, we're on that same team. All of us who are in Christ are born of the Father. And we will return back to the Father one day. Jesus told us these things so that uh, so that we can have peace when someone leaves us. He was about to leave. He said, look, you're going to look, hey. I'm going to leave him going back to the Father. The disciples understood what he was saying. And, 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 and so Jesus leaves us this peace so that we won't be uh, without peace or without hope. We, as children of God, are not hopeless 
as if leaving this world is the worst thing possible. That's what I told brother the other day. That's what I told brother the other day. I said, um, man, uh, that's not the worst thing that can happen to you when you leave this earth. You know, I think I might have told him a few things, or I won't freestyle that this morning. But we we are not hopeless as if leaving this world is the worst possible thing that could ever happen. It's not. Um, instead, we are hopeful, knowing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I know that comes from Paul saying that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, but it's true, though. It's true that when we leave this earth, it's just a transition into another life. If we're in God, if we're in Christ Jesus, if we're in the Father, if we are if we are in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is in us, we are resurrected back to life. Now, how long are we going to uh, sleep before the resurrection day? I don't know how, what happens out exactly after you die, whether you go stand there in, in, in the presence of the Father or whether you, uh, when you close your eyes, open them back up, the day is time. You know, that's what I think about. That's what I think about. I think that when we pass, when we close our eyes, take the last breath, the next time we open our eyes, we're there and everything is done. I think that when I, when we close our eyes and, and, and die and open up our eyes again, I think that we're right there and judgment day is here. And the whole world is in. It might be the year 2000. And in uh, 2099, might be the year 2099, uh, might be the year of 6,000. It might be a year of when he is coming back and he's going to get his his children up out of this place. You know what I'm saying? Um, this world reeks of pain, shame, death, sorrow, sin. In all types of evil. That's what this world reeks of. And it's getting to the point now to where uh well it, it's getting to the, it's getting worse now to where it's uh it's all about that. It's all about you how much of it you can do, how much of the sin you can do and say that this is my truth, this is what I choose, and so this is right in my eyes. Look, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, it's it's not the truth. If it doesn't match with what God says. It's not righteousness. If it's not Jesus Christ, it's not holiness. You know, if it doesn't match what God says, it's not holiness. If it's not Jesus Christ, it's not righteousness. There's no righteousness except the righteousness of Christ. All of our righteousness is like filthy rags. All of us uh, are, 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 are in sin, fading away in sin. And so when, when, and so when we, um, when we understand that the world is not our 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 permanent place when we when we when we uh let go of our love for the world as a permanent place we 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 more uh we're more adapted to our home in Jesus Christ now we can have that home on this earth as well we can have our home in Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the Father here on this earth we can Jesus says um <clears throat> he he came to bring us peace in Christ, there is peace. There is the peace that surpasses all understanding. Uh, uh, all understanding. It, it, uh, Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, But in all things, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You hear me? The peace that surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And, and and that's what Paul says, and that's the truth, because we can we can never achieve peace from things or from people. That's temporary stuff, not, not true everlasting peace. That's only some temporary stuff. When we place our hope, we place our happiness, we place our joy, we place our comfort in people, guess what? We can be let down because people leave us, uh, people turn on us. People uh go against us, and sometimes people are 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 uh, in the middle of, of two things. You know, what I'm saying they may be in between. If it's if it's three in y'all circle, you know, you may have you may have a disagreement with your buddy over there, and then you got one who you both of y'all trying to make them pick your side and say you're right. And guess what? Now he's in between. You know, she's they're in between and they're torn between the two. 
because they don't want to lose a friend. And th- and that's what people do. Sometimes people are are, are not uh, uh, so moved to make a decision in your favor. Sometimes they are, sometimes they are not. But guess what? God is always willing to make a move in your favor. And the, uh, to understand that, you must understand that the greatest thing that can happen to you is for you to be saved. See, if you think you're like, God, it ain't working out in my favor, how does that affect your salvation? Uh, yesterday, I, oh my God, I, I'm going to testify. It's sort of an embarrassing testimony, though. I know, uh, now I asked God, I said, Lord, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I said, Lord, please help me stop from playing the game so much because I hate playing the game so much. When I ain't in the, when I ain't in my scripture in the Bible, when I ain't at work or something, I be trying to find some time to sit in front of that Zelda game and play. You know what I'm saying? I, and sometimes I try to make excuses and say I'm playing with the baby or with my wife or the family, but that ain't even the case. So I don't even lie to you. I, I try to make excuses, but that's not the case. Like the majority of the time, that's not the case. Terai used to watch me play. But now she don't even be interested in it no more. And so and so I, I I asked the Lord, not recently, not just now, a few days ago, but I asked him that maybe maybe it's been a few weeks or a couple months ago or something. I said, God, man, just give me something, man. I need something else besides playing that game, you know, because it's, it's taking a lot of my time, you know, and it's dead time. I don't need that much. I don't need hours and hours and hours of dead time every day. I don't need to go to work and, you know, get off, read my Bible, then, Spend the rest of the time playing the game. Who want to do that? It's an idol. That's idolatry. I don't want to. I don't want it to be idolatry. And so anyway, I'll make the story short. And so uh, yesterday, man, I'm out there trying to hook up the doggone boat to move it out of the way so the grass can get cut. <laughs> uh, and man, the ball, the little ball thing. First time putting a little ball on a truck, and I'm like, man, it, 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 somehow the truck is lower than the than the boat will the boat trailer would let down and so i'm out there jumping up and down on it back and forth moving around i said i'm not gonna stick my finger up in here because i'm not gonna get my finger crushed by that thing if it slip and slide or something like that but anyway after after sweating and stuff all that stuff for an hour and a half i came in i said well it's time to go on call it night now <laughs> And I see, and I and I didn't complain about. It. I said, "Well, why would I complain about me asking God for something?" And that was doing that video game time. And God just said, "No, how about uh, you just do something else today, besides that game?" And I was I was grateful for it because it's something that I asked for. I asked God to pull me away, and then uh, even though it was a little uh, a little kind of some physical strenuous activity. I'm still grateful for it. And see, that's when we pray and ask God for something. And uh, and, and, and and he gives us the peace because he's answered our prayers. Uh, this world has so much to offer, but we have to place our peace, our joy, our hope, our trust in God to do things for our good. And, the, your, and your greatest good is your salvation. And so when something, and, and so when something doesn't go your way, oh, or when something goes the way that you don't want it or expect it, you have to ask yourself, how does it affect my salvation? How does it affect my relationship with God? How does it affect my eternal life? Uh, how how does me having to do all that affect my eternal life? Hey, e- either one of those things was okay. But guess what? The thing that happened outside instead of in the house yesterday was probably better because, hey, God had to allow it. And then I, 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 I think it led away from that idolatrous Dead time I be spending every day. Listen, or try to, not every day I try to do it. But I don't get a chance. I'm too busy. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. I'm about to say a few things to let you go because the time went down. If we love uh, uh, him and obey him, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Look at John 14, 15, and look at John 15, 14. You can find it in them areas right there. Jesus talking about uh Jesus talking about this. Say you love me, you will keep my commandments. Uh, so if we if we love him and obey him, doing what he like he said, do we are loved by the Father. Now I'm adding the word obey in there. Jesus just said, if you love me, the Father loves you. I I'm saying 
if we love and obey him. Because he says, the only way you love me is by obeying me. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So we love if we love him and keep his commandments, we are loved by the Father. We are. We are loved by the Father if we love Jesus and keep his commandments. If we are loved by the Father, our place is with the Father. It's not this world. Our place is not. Your place is not that big organization that you that you joined years ago. That's not your place. That's just a temporary thing. That thing should not make you. That thing should not define you. That thing should not be the uh, the uh, the reason. It should not make you think that that's the reason for your existence. No matter how much it affects your life, what it, what toll does it have on your salvation? How does it affect your being saved? How does it affect the salvation of other people? These are the questions you should ask yourself. Our place is with the Father. And let's, listen to this. If our place is with the Father, we are only here temporarily on this earth until he calls us back home. See, if you are of the Father, born of the Father, you are born of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God is going back to God. That part of you goes back to God, the Holy Spirit of God, when you pass from here. And if you're on this earth, if, 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 if you're on this earth and you're in Christ Jesus, your place is with in Christ Jesus, with the Father. He is with the Father. G yeah, Jesus is with the Father. You are in Christ Jesus. Your place is with the Father. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son. Your place is with them, with him, with God. And so if that's the case, you're only here temporarily until God calls you back home to be with him again. So let us consider uh, what our actions, what our lives, our behavior are, are, are tied into, whether they're tied into these uh, physical, temporary, carnal, worldly things, the lust and the pleasures of life, or is our, or is our life and our behavior and our actions tied into uh, doing the will of the Father, being in the presence of the Father, living for the Father, living like Christ Jesus, the one who died on the cross for our sin. That's the thing we must consider on a day-to-day -day basis. What do we want to, what do we want to live for Christ? What do we want to live for the world? What do we want to live in Christ? Or what do we want to live in the world? What do we want to live with Christ forever? Or will we rather be with the world forever? Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the word this morning, God. <clears throat> I feel like I, I said what you wanted the people to hear, Lord. If there's something I left out, Lord, bring it to them later, Lord. If there's something, Lord, that you don't want them to hear, Lord, remove it in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you will be with us on this day, Lord. Keep us, guide us, lead us, God. Teach us, show us, Lord, God, what you want us to do and help us to do those things, God. Equip us, Lord. Encourage us, Lord. Empower us, God. And enable us, God to do your will and to do all that you have set in front of us before our eyes, Lord God, to fulfill our purpose that you created us for, Lord God. Our ways are not your ways, God, and your thoughts are not our thoughts, Lord God. We're not the same, Lord, but we can, we can try to imitate you, Lord God, by following and imitating Christ Jesus, the perfect son who lived on this earth, who experienced uh, emotion and pain, and, and who experienced zeal, who experienced love while walking this earth. So God, if you could just show us how to be like him, Lord God. We can one day stand in your presence and you say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And we'll be overjoyed and we'll be satisfied, God. We'll be pleased. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, that's it for Morning Cup of Jesus. If the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. Thank you.
Thank you.